Good morning. My name is Chris. I'm one of the pastors here. I serve as a student's pastor and the team's pastor here at Church of the King. And we just want to let you know we're so glad that you're here with us. If you're a first-time guest, we hope that you feel welcome. We hope that someone said hello to you, and if they didn't, shame on them. Um, you can go tell them hello later, okay? Uh, but most importantly, we, can, we want to connect with you, and we want to give you something special. We don't want to bother you or badger you, but if you would, if you're a first-time guest, take the connection card that's in the seat back uh, pocket in front of you, fill it out, and during our offering time later in the service, just drop it in there or bring it to our welcome center. We want we have a special gift for you. Yeah. We want to send you in the mail and it's absolutely delicious. That's all I'll say about that. All right. As you walked in, you probably could tell that we're still under construction, um, but things are moving along. We have a lot of progress, lots of progress in the past couple of weeks. We're putting up sheetrock, glasses going in. So you can kind of see it coming together. Um, by the end of January, we should be about done and we're excited about the room we're making for those that are not here yet. All right, God is good, we're, we're moving forward, we're making room, we're also making room in our services, we're adding a third service, so we'll have a 9.30 service in the morning, 11 o'clock service, so you're at the 11.15 service, we're pushing that back 15 minutes, all right, and then 12.30, uh, it will be our new service for those that are not here yet. And we're so glad that even last week we saw a good, a great showing at that service as we, uh, it allows for more space during our Christmas service. Isn't God good? Hey, and this other thing I want to let you not, guys know about is on the 14th, our pastor, Pastor Todd, is going to be launching our, our um, Born for This sermon series. But listen, it's not just a sermon series. We're not asking you just to come on Sundays and hear six weeks of sermons that will change your life. But we want you to do more than that. You won't truly experience all that Born for This is unless you truly get plugged in to a small group. All right, if you want to host a group, there's still time. Please go on the app, go online, sign up to host a group. You can do that very simply by opening up the app. It's right at the top. Just click it, host a group, all right. It fits your schedule. You get to, you get to call the shots on when you meet because it's your group. Uh, but if you don't host a group, get in a group because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. This is where, re where real relationships happen, where true bonds take place. And God has formed us, first of all, for relationship with him. We want you to have a relationship with him as Church of the King, as, as the pastors here of this body. We want you to have a relationship with him. But we also want to foster an atmosphere, an environment where it's easy for you to have relationships that are meaningful, that are life-giving with one another. And so today we're going to talk about the power of of relationships. Now we are all, we are all in different types of relationships, whether we have romantic ones, we're married, we have brothers or sisters, family, um, you're dating someone, you just met someone, your friends, your children, we have all types of relationships. We want you to be in relationships ultimately that are life giving. So we're gonna look at four different types of relationships. So if you will, I hope you, you, you are ready to dive on in this morning. Let me pray and we'll, we'll do just that. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your son Jesus, who by his sacrifice we are allowed to come into relationship with you. And God, that is what you created us to be. We want, you want us to be in relationship with you. And Father, we ask that today would be a, a, a time, God, that we, we, we see life, that we see hope, that we see purpose. God, we, you would challenge us to move in the next step especially when it comes to relationships. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first type of relationship that I believe our church wants you to be involved in, that I believe you even want to be involved in, you probably have these types of relationships already. They're called personal relationships. Now, personal relationship does not mean that it's just functional, okay? Personal means it's, it's personal, all right? It's a functional relationship with someone because um, because. You go deeper than just a professional relationship. Now, you probably have a relationship with a doctor or a dentist or a plumber, something like that. But maybe you even have a relationship with your doctor or your plumber or your dentist that goes beyond a professional engagement or your teacher or something like that. You go deeper. You do life together. Personal relationships are very, very important. But before we talk about all the other types of relationships that we're going to talk about, I want to talk about 
the four types of personal relationships you should have, that we all hope to have, we strive to have, okay? And we're going to look at Jesus as the example. So Jesus had this this large influence that he had over people when in his earthly ministry, when he was here doing ministry as a man, he had a large influence. All right, he 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 had personal relationships with a lot of people, and we'd start off with maybe his sphere. All right, his sphere. If you're taking notes, you can take notes on the app or on the on the notes that you were given on the, on the way in. His sphere. Now, his sphere consisted of about 72 people that he sent out to do ministry. Now, Jesus is Jesus. He's God. We understand that's his divinity. He's probably capable, actually fully capable of having a deep personal relationship with every one of those 72 people like he is capable of having a deep relationship with us. But he was setting an example, an earthly example of how we are to engage with people around us. So the 72 people are people that he has influence over, but he's not going to have a deep abiding relationship with all of those people. He's going to put them to work. He's going to, he's going to, Influence them. That's a circle of influence, his sphere. These are, these, are, these, are, these are your extended family members that you, you, you see on occasion. This is not your Facebook friend list, okay? Because believe it or not, some of your Facebook friends have blocked you, okay? So you may think you're friends, but mm, you don't have influence over them. They don't get to see you very often. They don't get to see the nice, cute pictures of your kittens or anything like that, okay? Um, they, they, are, they are just, we call them friends, but, you know, they're just a list of people out there that kind of know who you are. Now, you have your close friends that are your Facebook friends. We're going to get there in a second. But your sphere is, is, is narrower than your Facebook friends. These are people that, that you have interactions with, your, your workplace, your schoolmates, that sort of thing. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 1. It says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two in every town and place where he himself was about to go. He sent people to where he was about to go to prepare the way. And if we use our sphere, these, this broader picture of personal relationships around us, to send people to places we're going to have influence over, it's going to broaden our approach, our, our ability to influence the world, especially as a force like the body of Christ. This is what we're called to do. Jesus has sent his church, his body, this Church of the King and all other churches that are like-minded, before he comes back to prepare the way so that when he comes, he has a fruitful return. We are the laborers, right? He sent us to prepare the way, just like he sent the 72 to prepare the way when he was doing his earthly ministry. The second type of personal relationship you're going to have is your people, all right? These are my people, your people. This is like your small group from church. Uh, this is your family, okay? The people that you see um, uh, more than once a week, okay? Uh, this is not... Your Pequino group, ladies, okay? These are not the ladies that, that get together once a month or so and just gossip the whole time. These, is, these aren't your people. I mean, you might have your people in your Pequino group, but these aren't your people, okay? Does that make sense? Uh, this, group of, this group of people you have, you have direct influence over, okay? You may not be the leader of the group, but you, you see them probably once a week or more. Uh, you say things, they listen, that sort of thing. So like your small group, this is very, very important why we want you to be in a small group. We don't have small groups every single week of the year, but you can be in a small group every single week of the year if you want to be. But we want you to be in a small group so that you can experience this deep abiding relationship that you can have with a smaller group of people. In, in Jesus' example in Mark 3, 14 through 15, it says, And he appointed 12 whom he also named apostles so that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. He gave them purpose. When we are in a, in a tight-knit group, smaller group of people, we find our purpose. When you're in a small group, when you talk about the things of God in a smaller sect of people, not in rows like this, this is nice, you should come to church, all right? Come more often if you don't come often, but just come, okay? This is good. 
But this is not where life change ultimately takes place. This is not where life happens. It happens in circles. And Jesus did life with 12 of his buddies. He called them. He called them for a purpose. The, the, the next group of people, the next type of personal relationship you should have is your core. Your core. This is like an accountability group. This is like three, four people tops, people that you can rely on, people that are praying for you. Now, your small group may be praying whenever they get together, but your smaller, smaller group, your core, they pray for you. They text you, hey, what's up? What's going on in your life? I noticed you posted something weird. I'm checking in on you. They have a permission to check up on you like that. And you also have permission to do the same with them. This is your core. These are the guys, fellas, these are the guys you call to help you move because we can't afford a moving company. Been there, done that. I've been the guy, I've mostly gotten people to help me move, okay? I have a lot of good friends. These are the people that you can call on when you're on the side of the road. These are the people you can call on when there's something going wrong in your life. These are the people that they can call on you as well. Jesus had these three guys, Peter, James, and John. Look at what Matthew 17, 1 says. It says, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led him led them up to the high mountain by themselves. He sent, he had a special bond and connection with these three guys. They were apostles. They were disciples. They were amongst the 72. They were in his larger group, but he had a deep abiding relationship with these guys. I promise you when he, if he had a cell phone, he could have called them up and they would have been right there on the double, all right? And one might be like the other ones that may have been sleeping on the job. They were there at every turn. And lastly, the type of personal relationship, and unfortunately, we may think we have this type of relationship with a lot of people or some people. But because we have not invested in our sphere, because we have not invested or thought it a priority to be in a small group, and we have not found our core, it is very rare to truly have a BFF. I, I couldn't find another word to, to describe it. I'm a 13-year-old girl, all right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. Your BFF, your buddy, your bro, like this is your bestie, the person that knows everything about you more than your family does. This is your 2 a.m. friend. This is your 2 a.m. friend. You know what I'm talking about. Your 2 a.m. friend, the person that you can call when everything has hit the fan. But it's so rare to have that when we don't invest in the other three. You can't find that when you, haven't, you don't have a healthy sphere, when you don't have a small group of friends, when you don't have a core. Because for Jesus, John was this guy. John was in every single one of those groups of people. Several times in the New Testament, John is referred to as the, as the disciple or the apostle whom Jesus loved. Look at what verses, uh, John chapter 21, verse 7 says, that, the, that disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he was stripped for, he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. John is the one referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, Jesus loved us all. He loved them all. But there was a special connection, a special relationship that he had with John. He entrusted his mother to John whenever he died. That's a, that's a serious responsibility. I don't, know, I don't know really if most of us or many of us have someone that we would trust with our mother or with our wife if we weren't no longer here. That's hard to, that's hard to come by. We have to invest in relationships. But I want you to get this, guys. All these types of relationships, great. They're great personal relationships. We want you to be in them. But be careful because you can become a clique. You can be a closed off group. You can become exclusive. You can have your hand out stretched. You can say, well, I've done all these relationships. I'm in them. I have a BFF. I'm a, a, a practically done with getting friends and all that, right? No, Jesus, get this. Jesus had some deep 
personal relationships, but he was always open and outgoing towards everyone. Don't ever close off the opportunity to have those types of relationships in your life just because maybe you're older or you've been through it or you've been hurt. God's always at work and he wants to use relationships to do so. So these are just personal relationships, all right? That's my long point, just, just a heads up. I like to give you a heads up. That was my long one, okay? Second type of relationship that we want you to be a part of, these are deepening relationships. Deepening relationships. We're not using the word deep here. We're using the word deepening because relationships are always in process. Relationships are always in process. Even my marriage, we haven't arrived. Everything's not hunky-dory all the time. We can get better at things. Your best friend, there's things that you can do better. Communication, giving, support, deepening relationships. They're very, very important. It's a process. It's a process. Galatians 6, 2 it gives us insight that this is not just about how you're doing. Like we're, we're not in relationships just to, to say hello or to, to say that we have friends, just like Facebook says, oh, well, I have, you know, X amount of friends. That's not what it's about, right? It says bear one another's burdens and so, and so fulfill the law of Christ. When you have deepening relationships, it's going to hurt sometimes. I mean, that, I don't know if it's comfortable, but I don't, I don't think it's comfortable to burden, I mean, to, to, to bear one another's burdens, that means to carry someone's hurts when they can't do it themselves. This is what, it, this is what marks a deepening relationship, Galatians 6.2. The third type of relationship that we believe as a church body we want you to have and we want you to be a part of, not just deepening relationships, but these are supporting relationships. This is where it takes two to tango, Okay. We cannot be in relationships so that we can get out of it what we want alone. Some of us are seeking fulfillment in relationships because we want something. Excuse my generation, millennials. My, part of me, I'm, I'm a millennial. But we have created apps and we have created things that, that are supposed to mimic this interaction, this personal relationship with one another for the sole purpose in most cases so that we are fulfilled, that I feel good, that hole that you're looking for is often found in meaningful relationships, but is first found in Jesus. And listen, Jesus is the best example of a supporting relationship. But first of all, he did everything for us. But he has saved us not just so that we can go to heaven. He has saved us so that we have a purpose here on this earth. We are to do our job on the back end. He's done all the work on the front end. Now, your work on the back end doesn't get you like, you know, a high rise in, in the sky, okay, in, in heaven. But he does call us for a purpose. It's a supporting relationship. Love, listen, Jesus is about love, right? Jesus' relationships were about love, but look at this. Love means that our desire is to be a load lifter. Jesus lifted the load of sin in our lives. A burden bearer, like that scripture we just read. A helper. Are you there in the times of need whenever someone is going through something that you've been through it, you know what it's like. Are you there to help? And a strengthener. Okay, relationships are made whole, they're made strong when you do things together. The best example I have for this is in a marriage. Listen, I screw up a lot. When I'm trying to do things my own way, things don't go well. When both of us understand that we're going for the same purpose, a common goal, even when we have disagreements, things tend to work out better because it's supportive. We have common goal, we have common purpose. As a church, if we went 200 different directions because we wanted to cover more ground as a church, we would have mission drift. We wouldn't know what we were talking about. But because we have many arms and feet and hands and eyes and ears and parts of this body, 
that are willing to go for the same purpose, to reach people and to build lives, we are a force to be reckoned with. This is a supporting relationship. This church, this body, you're here for one another. Look at what Acts chapter 20, verse 35 says. It says, in all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. In this season, we know that. Doesn't it feel good to give someone something that they, they've wanted for a long time or given something to someone they didn't expect to receive? That's the type of relationship you need to be in. That's the type of person you need to be in a relationship. Supportive, giving, helper, strengthener. Listen, guys, personal relationships, yes, we all probably have them. Some are healthy, some are not. This year, get rid of those, okay, or work on them. Maybe you're the problem. Deepening relationships, yeah, we all want them. We want to go deep with people. We want supportive relationships. We want to be around people that, that help us. We want to help people. I, I know that that's ultimately our goal, but you know what? All those types of relationships, someone who's not in Christ can have those. They can, and they do often. Probably do a good job sometimes. But the type of relationship that ultimately we want you to be in, besides your relationship with Jesus, is a faith-building relationship. A faith-building relationship. All Christian relationships have this goal, is to help each other stay satisfied in God. Your relationship with other people should have one goal. It's so that you stay satisfied in God. Because here lies the problem. Herein lies the problem, guys. When we are trying to feel satisfied, or we try to get, be satisfied by the other person in the relationship. But when that person in the relationship is not just meeting your needs, but they're pointing you to the ultimate provider, to Jesus, your faith is built. It's made stronger. It's, you realize your purpose. This is why it's so important, guys, that you get in a group. We, we may sound like broken records. You may be like, I'm done. I, I've been in a group. It's been a bad experience. I've had people over at my house. People tore up my stuff. They ate all my food. They wore shoes in my house. I have a no shoe rule. Tell them. I don't know. Listen, give it a chance. Because faith-building relationships will change your life. They're not just willy-nilly. They're not just personal. They're not just having some guys over and watching TV. They're special. And out of, the, out of these groups, you will find deepening relationships. You will find supportive relationships. You will find your 2 a.m. friend if you don't have one. And listen, everyone can, can have two 2 a.m. friends because you'll use up the first one. No. God has built us for relationships. Now, I know that for you, a relationship may be daunting or maybe like you just, I don't even like being around people. And I realize that I'm a, I'm a very outgoing person. I like to be the life of the party. I like to be heard, obnoxiously so. Like I get that, I know. People invite me to weddings just so that I'll be the first one on the dance floor, okay? I'm an outgoing person. I like to be around people. So relationships are come fairly easy. But you know what? I found that I have a lot of relationships, very few deep relationships because of that. It's a flaw. Well, my wife, though, she's an introvert. But you know what? She would tell you that she likes relationships, that she still wants to be in a deep abiding relationship for, with me to begin with. But she wants to have that with her children. She wants to have that with her friends, with other people. It just looks different. So it doesn't matter where you are or what kind of person you are, what kind of personality you have. God has built you for relationship. First of all, with him. But second of all, look at all these people around here. You didn't come here because you like just a, you like the comfy chair. You didn't come here because you like the fancy lights. You didn't come here just because the, the music sounds great. 
You came here to be with people even if you don't know it yet. You came here to be with God even if you don't know it yet. Let me pray. God, I know that in a room like this, it's very likely that someone is out of relationship with you in a broken relationship with somebody. God, I pray that you would just reveal that to that person, to those people. If that's you today, maybe I f you feel like I'm speaking right to you. That's you, you, you you're, you're, you're struggling in a, in a personal relationship. You're struggling in a marriage. You're struggling in a friendship. You're struggling with your children. These are all types of relationships. And you need some prayer, you need some help. First of all, God can do that for you, God can help you. But we wanna come behind you as a church. I'd like to pray for you right now. If that's you, you, just, you need help in any type of relationship, you just raise your hand real quick for me. Just raise your hand so I can see it. Hands all over the place. You put your hands down. God, I know what it's like to be in a broken relationship. I know what it's like to be in hurtful relationships. God, I know what it's like to be in relationships that don't seem to go anywhere. God, I pray for your sovereign will in each one of these situations, Father. Would you soften the heart of both parties? Would you allow forgiveness to take place? God, would you allow love to, to, to fill the space the void that they feel because there's brokenness within the relationship. God, would you call us to do the work that it takes to build that relationship up? And I also know in a room like this, it is very likely that someone is out of relationship with God. Meaning you don't have a deep abiding personal relationship with the creator of the universe and that sounds like a scary thought for you. But Jesus came so that you may have that. Jesus came, he lived on this earth, he died for your sins, and he was raised to heaven so that you and I could have communion, not just bread and juice, but we could have togetherness, reconciliation with the God of the universe who longs to have a relationship with each and every one of us here today. And maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. Maybe you've never said, yes, I want that relationship. Yes, I'll trust in you. Yes, I give you my life, Jesus. So if that's you, you've never said yes to Jesus or you want to say yes to Jesus today, just raise your hand. Raise your hand. I see hands going up. If that was you, maybe you raised your hand or you didn't raise your hand, you were scared to, but you know in your heart you need to have a relationship with Jesus. Repeat after me. This is a prayer. I want actually everyone in the room to just repeat after me so that no one feels ostracized or anything like that. Just repeat after me in your heart. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your son, Jesus. I want a relationship with you. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for my sins. I give my life to you. Will you show me how to live with purpose? In relationship with you, in relationship with others. In Jesus' name, amen. God is so good because what's incredible about having a relationship with him is that just like that, some of you just entered into the family of God. You weren't, you're not part of the 72, you're not part of the 500, you're not part of the 12. You are one-on-one -on -one having a relationship with God because he did all the work on the front end. Amen? He still calls us, yes, that's good. He still calls us to do some work on the back end. Work at your relationship with him. Stay in a body of Christ, this one or some other one. Get in a small group. Have a relationship with other people. I promise you it's worth every moment that you spend with one another. Pastor Todd.